Hi, Megan. Hey, Sarah. How are you this week? Oh, I'm doing great. I Like I always say, I'm so happy to be here and be oh, doing this right now. Me too. <laughs> I, um, I got the uh, sweetest text message from a friend's little sister this past week, and she had a makeup question for me. And uh, by little sister, she's an adult now, but I've known her since she was two. Um, she's in her early 20s now. <laughs> but she had a question for me, and and I, I came up with the answer, but I thought, oh my gosh, I need to talk to Megan about this. So she is moving from California to a state where there is a lot of humidity. Oh. And she was asking me what foundation to use because I've supplied her with bare minerals over her, you know, teenage years. And I have a lot of bare minerals and she asked about bare minerals. And I know from my experience in the beauty industry and just working really closely with lots of makeup artists, they always advise on liquid foundation for humidity. And right now the liquid foundation that I'm loving, it's a clean brown brand is from House Labs. That's the Lady Gaga's brand. Oh. And it's their skin tech uh, liquid foundation. And I love that foundation. But for me living in California, I just think I have this foundation for like if we're going to do photos, like when we did our photo shoot, I will, yeah. you know, or if we're going to, you know, have a big event. So I referred, I, I sent her the link for that foundation. I was like, this is the one for humidity because of my knowledge, my conversations with makeup artists, but I don't know very much about humidity. <laughs> I've lived in California my whole life. And I thought after the fact, I need to talk to Megan because she's yeah. from Florida. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. This brings me back to the days when I would go to football games in a hundred degree heat sit in the sun and like you would be it's so hot and humid at times in the south it's like you're just walking through mud um and the you sweat dripping I wear mean, only liquid foundation or do you even can you even no. wear makeup in that weather yes you can um i i find it very interesting that makeup artists recommend liquid for that type of humidity because what tends to happen is your body makes like obviously a lot of sweat and it sort of pops up all over your face. Um, and what I needed at the time was the dryer foundation. So mm. I would often use two. I would put some liquid on with some SPF and then um, definitely dust my face really well with a good powder. And I think like if I'm I'm thinking about a trip I'm going to um, Florida soon this yes. summer, and I'm thinking to myself, this is not a Bare Minerals original type of trip because it's going to be 100 degrees and so hot. This is going to be a bare pro type of trip. Okay. I, like a heavier powder to absorb oh. all of that, that sweat and like just the dampness. But that's um, interesting because like the bare pro is a – it's a compressed powder. So a compressed mm -hmm. powder, that makes sense to me because a loose powder – I feel like would separate and almost um, settle in. It's like, yes, yeah, with it does. sweat, and it. I'll notice if I work out and I'm wearing that original foundation. It doesn't. It doesn't look great afterwards. Yeah. Um. It, the pigment like separates. So yeah. You almost want like a liquid with then a compressed powder, powder. on top to set it. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't oh, even okay. use that applicator. I still use my loose powder brush and I just brush that Bare Pro and get it on my face. And it just, I honestly, I love that Bare Pro. It just covers yeah. everything. <laughs> and then that applicator it comes with is perfect because you can put that thing, throw it into your purse. Because if you're in the South and you're going to somewhere with a lot of humidity, you're going to need touch-ups often. Because like oh, your okay. my nose especially would like my makeup would just come off of it or that's where like I tended to sweat was like on top of my nose and so often I'd have to like just like reapply and, and just like dab my nose and just um you know cover it up and uh, make sure it's not shiny. Um, oh okay, yeah, yeah that so interesting. I'm like yeah. I don't think I even really know what humidity in the South is like because I guess <laughs> I suppose I've traveled. The places I'm thinking of is like tropical humidity, like yeah, like South America, like Costa Rica. Is is that similar or is this very different? 
Yeah, Costa Rica would be very similar. Like that okay. oppressive. I mean, it's yes. sometimes it's just like you're it's like you're walking through water. Like it's so yes. thick outside. Um and it can be that way even when it's not hot. You can still have that liquid. Like it just feel you just are naturally <laughs> going to be a little bit more moist. Um, Sounds amazing. So, no, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> I will get you down to, to Florida, Miss Sarah. It's going to happen one day. Uh, we're going to do a beach trip, or I'm going to bring you to a Florida State football game. <laughs> Make you go through it with oh my me. Gosh. Um, yeah, it's it's something women go through, and your hair products are a bit different down there too, because you can't like straighten your hair and expect it to stay that way. Like it's not going right. to happen. You know. What do yeah. you do? You just oh. have flat hair and wet faces. <laughs> I mean, if you are lucky enough to have flat hair, then that's what happens to you. But oh. like a lot of women like myself, I have like naturally sort of wavy hair and it just, it needs to be told what to do. Either you're going to be straight or you're going to be curly, but I've got to tell it what to do with a <laughs> curling iron or a straight iron. Um, and if you have that type of hair, your hair just sort of puffs out like a big poof. Like it's it just... It gets so frizzy and puffy and you have, you have to have extra product. You need to, you know, do touch-ups again because <laughs> after it gets all puffed up like that, you got to lay it back down. So, um, Okay. So yeah. tell me the truth. Is the reason that you've stayed in California because it's just easier <laughs> to do weather. your hair and makeup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something you take for granted. Like I, I forget until I go back down there to the south and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's like, it's not just hot, it's this humidity. And it, um, yeah, it's a lot easier to do hair and makeup in California where it's dry and arid and you just tell your hair what to do. It just does it. It's pretty easy going. So, um, interesting. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. So a good liquid foundation, um, and then a nice pressed powder on top. Yes. That's what I would recommend yeah. for sure. Okay. Some people good like those papers that like absorb oil or, um, I don't know if you've oh. used those. Some people like those um, down there too because if you get sweaty, you can just like dab yourself a little bit to get it off. But um, <clears throat> I just I just would use extra powder. It's <laughs> easier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yay. Interesting. Good, Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someday I'll experience the Florida. You definitely <laughs> will. I'm going to make sure you do. <laughs> we'll put all your beauty trips tips um We'll put them to the test down in. Oh Florida. gosh! Oh yeah. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. how are you this week? What's going on with you? I'm good. Um, I have got to say thank you. For, so Sarah bought me the Thrive um, mascara, and you brought it over yesterday. And this morning, I took my shower, and I was so excited. I did my makeup before I even did my hair, which usually I don't, because I was Aww. so excited to try it. And I'm in love. Okay, I good. love it. And it didn't – I've I've been wearing it all day and I just checked myself before I came on this podcast and it hasn't budged. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing – a lot of times what I tend to have is like the raccoon eyes at the end of the day mm. because my mascara has sort of dissolved and fallen onto that part of my skin. I'm not seeing that with this one. So I am shocked. Yeah, oh, thank it's, you. Isn't it the best? It's it is the best. It is I, the best mascara I have found. The best clean mascara I have found to date. Yeah, I can't uh, believe it's clean. I know. Number one, because it's like it's such a lengthener. Like I, mm -hmm. and you really can build it out. Now, I will say, for fun, I did try to add a little bit more this afternoon, and. I would say, don't do that. Start over again. Yes. Is that right? So <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Don't apply wet to dry, to dry. with okay. a tube with any tubing mascara, whether it's clean or not. The way that you can do that with a non-tubing mascara, but it just doesn't work with a tubing mascara. So you got to do it all at once, and then if you need more later, redo it. Just take it off and do it again. Take yeah. it off and do it again. It's yeah, really it easy so to take fresh. it off. So yeah, yeah. Um, I loved it. I was just like playing with it and stuff like that. And it's so – like the liquid, um, the mascara, the black liquid is just like so thick. Like it's mm -hmm. just such a nice, luxurious um, uh, product. So I, I'm Yay. impressed. Yeah, oh, I love God. it. Thank you. I'm so happy you so love excited. it. We also were able to just get a $15 off first purchase coupon with 
Thrive for our listeners. So you can go ahead over to our Instagram at Platinum Perspective Podcast, and it's saved in our stories, um, in our saved stories, as well as on our page um, to click enter your email and get an automatic $15 off, which that's a, that's a great deal. $15 that's a great off. Deal. Yeah. Think that's a great deal. Get that deal. mascara for just 10 bucks. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I just had a friend text me after she saw that promo code and she's like, darn, I just bought two bottles of this oh. like two days ago. And I'm like, well, use that coupon and get a third. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mascara is good for about a year. Okay. So I always think about that. If you're someone who likes to use a lot of different types of mascara, after about the year mark, I toss them. Oh, good um, to know. They'll have an expiration date on the bottom, either of the component or the package. But just because it's going on your eyes, I don't like to mess with anything that could be a little bit old. Oh, so um, yeah. yeah, if you're thinking ahead and she would use two or three tubes of that mascara um, within a year, which I definitely would. Then yeah. <laughs> go ahead and go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, my my test is going to be um, wearing it in Florida. So I'm going to oh. I'm going to see how it goes because, okay. um, you know, because it's not uh, it's not waterproof or it doesn't say it's waterproof, but because it hasn't disintegrated on my eye yet, it makes me wonder if it's going to be uh, a good performer. In that oh, humidity. okay. I'm excited to know about that. Yeah. Yes, it's not waterproof, but because it's a tubing mascara, what I've noticed is if I've worn it all day, it will, at the very end of the day, maybe 10 hours in, it will start to flake a little bit. And then usually I'm washing my face and I just will put cool water or warm water is fine as well um, on my eyelashes and just kind of rinse and it, the tubes just kind of slide off oh. and then you just do a second or third rinse and it's all gone. There's no raccoon eyes. There's no smudging. You don't get like a weird, you know, black mascara line on your forehead because you've been washing your face. It just wow. is really easy to come off. So I'll be interested to know if you're sweating a lot, Yeah, what that does. You'll have to come back with that as a check-in. I will. Yeah. I'll let you know. I'll let you know how it performs. Okay. In well, I'm glad that heat. you I'm glad that you like it. Your eyelashes yeah. look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome everyone to Platinum Perspective. This is the podcast about beauty, travel, luxury, and more. I'm your co-host Sarah, and I'm Megan. Sarah and I are best friends who put the work in to get the most out of life, so you don't have to. <laughs> Today, we are super excited because we are going to do an episode on clean sunscreen. Yay! I'm excited. <laughs> We're going to jump into summer with a clean sunscreen episode. So when we did our first clean beauty episode, we received a lot of feedback from friends, family, and listeners, and some DMs and comments asking about what about clean sunscreen. And this is such a important topic, I think, especially for moms who are putting sunscreen on our babies. And so Megan and I did have a wealth of knowledge on sunscreen, but we wanted to really do the extra research. And so we took some time and we read all the reports. We dove deep into this topic. And today we're going to bring our findings to you. Yes, this is a perfect way to start the summer, just being ready yes. to pro to protect our skin and um, with some clean, you know, chemical-free sunscreen. Yes. So I'm excited. Yeah. Me too. Um, so I have some rapid fire questions for our beauty expert, Sarah. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Is sunscreen really that important or is it a product that uses fear mongering for increased consumerism? Great question. I think there are lots of products out there, lots of products on the market that use fear mongering for increased consumerism and it's really a shame. This is not one of them. In my opinion, it is very important. It decreases the risk of skin cancers and precancers. A study that we read for researching this episode found that regular daily use of SPF 15 or more reduced the risk of developing squamous cell carcinoma by 40% and lowered melanoma risk by 50%. 
So those are huge staggering numbers and worth using sunscreen for. Gosh, yeah, that's a pretty substantial uh, risk we're taking away from using Mm -hmm. sunscreen. Okay, question two. Is sun damage really the number one sign of aging? Yes, sun damage really is the number one sign of aging. Um, Really, it's sunlight, and that can come in the form of the sun, but also, like we spoke to on our um, episode with esthetician Carrie Gillespie, that also can include blue light. So light from your phone and computer can cause sun damage as well. Gosh, yeah, that was the, that was shocking to hear. <laughs> I know. Um, something to keep in mind. Yes. Okay, question three. Should we be using powder, liquid, or spray sunscreen? Ooh, I think all three. <laughs> <laughs> the more, the better. <laughs> the more, the better. I think all three three uh, for different uh, different occasions. And we'll get into that a little bit later on, but I think all families should have powder, liquid, and spray, but not aerosol sunscreen. Oh, yes, that's right. Let's get into that. Okay. Bonus question. With the increase in mineral sunscreen options, is there any reason that anybody should still be using a chemical sunscreen? No. We came to the conclusion that no, there is no reason that anyone should still be using a chemical sunscreen. Mineral sunscreen is better for our skin and it is safer for our environment. It's safer for marine life, including fish and the coral reefs. Chemical sunscreen is a thing of the past and there's amazing options within mineral and physical sunscreen. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yep. I totally agree. Um, time to move on with the times and move on with our sunscreen application and start using mineral. I agree. Yes. Um, okay. Well, let's let's shift gears. Thanks for um, your clarifying answers on those. Um, let's shift into the importance of using sunscreen. Um, so the first is obviously the most obvious. It's um, discuss. It's protecting the skin um, from the harmful effects of the sun's ultraviolet rays. Of course, yes. Protect away. (laughs) Um, Exposure to UV radiation can cause um, sunburns, premature aging, and an increased risk of skin cancers, um, which is no fun. Um, So covering up and sunscreen are just the best ways to be preventative um, for these Um, these problems. And we want to make sure we indicate that skin is our number one organ. So it's the largest organ that we have. And um, I feel like because of that, we tend to not think so much about protecting it. I don't know. People, I think, don't think of skin as an organ, but um, it's all over our bodies and um, super important to make sure that we are taking care of that organ with um, using you know, sun barriers, like including hats and um, shirts and things like that, just to cover up. And when we can't, when we're swimming, or there's other reasons why, um, that we're using sunscreen to to protect our skin. Yes. And frankly, just the appearance of like sunspots and dark spots. I know growing up, like I, I never even thought I was going to get that. I didn't know what that was. And so I wasn't really thinking about it. And now here I am almost 40 and I am seeing, you know, like I'm starting to see those spots. They're popping up. They're red. They're brown. Um, Young people, if you're listening, do the preventative work like right now so you don't see this when you get to be a little bit older. It starts popping up and it's not pretty. So it's not pretty and it doesn't, it, it's so hard for it to go away. I know I spoke to my sunspots on the laser episode we did, but once you get to be like late 30s, um, all the sun damage that you absorbed from your childhood years, teenage years, young 20s that you couldn't see, they have moved to the surface and they are hard, um, hard to get them off, I suppose, or hard to um, lighten them. I've tried everything and nothing is a hundred percent. Lasers I found are the best, but 
it would have been better to just wear sunscreen all the time and not lay in tanning beds. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. I really liked what Carrie had to say on that previous episode, um, the esthetician, because she said it's basically like an indication of past trauma on your skin. Yes. Um, And it comes up as you get older and it's like, of course it's cumulative. Like what else is not – it's it's cumulative on your skin. Um, And so, you know, the more sunburns, the more sunspots and the the greater risk for having um, cancer. In fact, 9,500 people a day are diagnosed with skin cancer, um, which is an incredible number. Um, So we need to be more vigilant, um, get the word out. And, um, you know, we have some great recommendations for some sunscreens that we like the application of. Um, It's just pleasant sometimes. So if you find a good one you love, it's good to just keep with it. Yes. I love that. Before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about the difference between mineral and chemical sunscreens, because this is something that I've only recently learned about in the last couple years. And and Carrie helped um, educate us on this even more. So with a chemical sunscreen, it's going to contain synthetic ingredients like avobenzone, oxybenzone, and octanoxate. 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 (laughs) They're synthetic. Neither of us can say it. That's that's how bad it is for you, everybody. You can't even pronounce it. If you can't pronounce something, you should not be putting it on your body or inside either. (laughs) Oh my God, I love that. Exactly. Yeah. So those are the those are some of the type of active ingredients. Mineral sunscreens are also known as physical sunscreens or a sun blocker. They use natural minerals. So zinc oxide, titanium dioxide um, are the main ingredients that are proven to provide protection. So when we're talking about how these sunscreens work, they work very differently. So chemical sunscreens work by absorbing UV rays and converting them into heat energy, which is then released from the skin. Mineral sunscreens, um, which is one reason they're also called sun blocks, is they form a physical barrier that reflects and scatters UV, UV rays away from the skin. So mineral sunscreens also work with blue light. So if you're wearing a mineral sunscreen and you're on your phone and computer all day, you're also going to have a block from that, which for me, that was reassuring to know. Also with regards to chemical sunscreens, they can sometimes cause skin irritation or allergic reactions because they're made with these synthetic ingredients. Mineral sunscreens are generally considered to be much more gentle and they're much less likely to cause irritation because they're made with minerals. So they're much more suitable for all skin types. Also something to consider when we're talking about the difference between chemical and mineral is the environmental impact. Mm -hmm. So chemical sunscreens have been found to contribute to coral bleaching and they damage marine ecosystems when washed off in the water. We're going to get more into that a little bit further down. But um, mineral sunscreens are totally safe, um, and they're environmentally friendly. Also, a lot of them come in environmentally friendly or um, recycled componentry just because the brands that are producing mineral sunscreens are brands that – care more in general about Mm -hmm. their footprint. Mm -hmm. As far as immediate protection, another selling point as if um, the healthy ingredients and the impact to the environment weren't enough, mineral sunscreen, as soon as you put it on, it works. It's immediately uh, blocking the sun from your skin. Chemical sunscreens, you'll see that on the package, a lot of them say, wait 20 minutes until you go out into the sun. Mm -hmm. And that's because they don't immediately work. They Mm -hmm. take some time to sit into your skin to um, be effective. Yeah. So I think that that kind of explains the difference between chemical sunscreens and a physical and mineral sunscreen. And really in doing all the research 
um, on a chemical sunscreen versus a mineral sunscreen, I haven't found any reason why we would still be using chemical sunscreen. Right. Yeah. Beside the fact that they, you know, the ease of application might be one thing that's sort of, I'm thinking like the spray sunscreens that like, obviously yes. like the aerosol is not good and the sunscreen is going to have chemicals, but boy, is that easy to put on, you know, like, um, it so is. it's going to have a little bit of extra work using mineral sunscreen, but there actually are some mineral sunscreens that I've used that do have a spray top. They just don't mm-hmm. spray with aerosol. They just spray the actual lotion onto you. So, um, some of those are a little bit easier to use. Like I know Supergoop makes one and, um, I'm trying to think the other ones I've tried, but they work pretty well. I, th- I think it's important to note that when we're switching from conven- conventional items into this healthier option, some of the, I don't know if it's luxuries or just ease that we've experienced with conventional items, we may have to give on that mm-hmm. because some of these products have been created with ease of mind versus health and environment in right. mind. So when we're switching, okay, well, it's not going to be in an aerosol. And I know an, another piece with chemical sunscreen is it, um, there's a lot of waterproof chemical sunscreen. Yeah. With mineral sunscreen, you do have to apply uh, more often, especially if you're swimming. It is not as waterproof because the waterproofing the ingredients that make a chemical sunscreen waterproof are unhealthy. So they're not going to be in that mineral sunscreen. So I think those two things are maybe something we have to give on Mm -hmm. to um, make the switch to something healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of trial and error to try these things out and see which ones sort of suit you best. I mean, it comes down to personal preferences a lot of times, like application and things like that and staying power matter. Um, and some of these items may not have that and some of them may, I actually have some, we recommend recommendations at the end for ones that do stay. Um, and we have tried with our kids, which we'll get to that. Because we've tried them all. We have tried many. Yeah, we've tried (laughs) them, but we have some good recommendations. And then I know Megan, you did some extra research on, because we both travel to Hawaii often Yeah, and there have been some sunscreen bans in Hawaii and as well as in Australia. Right. And I know there were, a, you had done some research on what exactly is going on there because if they're banning something, maybe we shouldn't be using it over here either, right? I know. It seems like America sometimes like last to do the bans. But um, yeah, so uh, Hawaii um, recently did implement a ban on the sale and distribution of sunscreens that in, um, in contain oxybenzone and octinoxate, uh, which are chemically uh, commonly found in chemical sunscreens. Um, and so going back to what Sarah was just saying, um, these are ones that we were saying we don't want our, on our skin anyways, either ones we want to avoid. So this ban is okay by me. Um, it was intended to protect coral reefs. That's why they instituted the ban, um, because they had found that the chemicals were contributing to coral bleaching and damage. So, Mm. um, we started going back to Hawaii probably like a year and a half ago. And I, I saw all kinds of sunscreens for sale when I was there and I wasn't thinking about it. Um, and then I systematically started to notice that they were taking sunscreens off. Like the, even the resorts weren't selling the sunscreens they used to sell. Mm -hmm. And they had gone to this, all the mineral stuff, which I was shocked at the last time I went. Um, but it sort of forced me to try some of those mineral sunscreens when I otherwise wouldn't have. So you know, sometimes these institute institutions like sort of putting these bands in, like they seem sort of like a pain, but um, it's an introduction to a new product, I think. And I think it's for the best anyways, because it's just healthier for us and healthier for the reefs. Yes. Um, I remember when we were in Hawaii last year, um, the Ritz Carlton had some signage up on their beach. They have a private oh, beach there in Maui yeah. and they um, have a sunscreen cart and they had only mineral sunscreens and then they had big signs explaining it. Um, mm-hmm. And that was, that was great to see. It was great yeah. to see that um, this was being, not only was this bill passed, but it was being implemented as well. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was super interesting. Um, and 
you know, good for them for protecting their coral reefs and the things that make that Hawaii so naturally beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Australia hasn't really instituted any specific sort of ban per se recently, but they are known for their very strict regulations on sunscreen products. Um, And they have something called the Therapeutic Goods Administration over there, which I I love. It's the regulatory body responsible for overseeing sunscreens in Australia. Um, And they have established guidelines on sunscreen ingredients and labeling requirements to ensure consumer safety. Um, And so sunscreen products in Australia are classified as therapeutic goods, and they must be registered with the TGA, the, the Therapeutic Um, Goods Administration. And um, they are evaluating sunscreen products all the time for their safety and effectiveness before they can be sold in the Australian market. Um, And so it made me think back to that clean beauty episode where we talked about how Sephora has the um, the green check mark Mm -hmm. that you you can look for for the clean beauty options. Um, I kind of like that. And I think, you know, Australia is sort of setting a precedent with their TGA um, in, ter- in terms of making sure that sunscreens are being labeled correctly and even telling us what's in them. Um, so I, I yes. agree with that as well. I kind of, I want to know, you know, mm-hmm. as the consumer. Um, yeah. That's great. And I think um, it's it, it's great hearing that coming out of Australia as well, because we know that they are at a higher risk of sun damage just based on where they're located. One of my favorite kid sunscreens is made in Australia and it's New Day Skin and it's a great kid sunscreen. Um, And just knowing that it's past the standards that they have there and it's effective for um, that environment where they're in the mm-hmm. sun, the direct sunlight and the sun is hotter where they are so much more so than where we are. It's right. great to know that if it's protecting those little Australian babies, it's going to be good for my babies here. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They're, they're getting a lot of sun down there. So if something works down there, it's, it's going to work here too. So yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Well, that's good to know. So as far as forms of sunscreen. We touched on this a little bit. So there's liquid, um, spray and brush on. So liquid, just the standard lotion type of sunscreen and kind of what you had mentioned, Megan, is there's been a lot of opportunities with some (laughs) liquid mineral sunscreen that we've tried. (laughs) I love when you say opportunities because I know you actually It's like my product development mindset. I'm like, oh, there's a consistency opportunity yes. here. Yes, I love it. A place to well, be improved. Yes, and mm-hmm. when you're putting it on children, yeah, having a consistency opportunity, as in that it's just like too thick or too hard to rub on, it doesn't work because right. I don't want my kids crying every time we're putting sunscreen on, right? Which has happened because sometimes it's a challenge. Um, so getting a nice liquid sunscreen, which we'll have some recommendations a little bit uh, later on, is great. And then there's spray, which we want to make sure we're staying away from an aerosol spray, which an aerosol spray is, you know, traditionally what we grew up using, Mm -hmm. um, just like spraying all over your whole body. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. But we know that the chemicals that push the a product out of an aerosol component are dangerous. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about spray sunscreen, it's going to be in a pump. So a spray pump that you're using with a finger and then brush on mineral sunscreen. So we've talked a lot about our color science, Mm -hmm. brush on mineral sunscreen, and there's other brands as well. So those are the three forms of mineral sunscreen. And like I mentioned in rapid fire, I think they're all important. I like to keep all of them in my house for different occasions. Yeah. How about you guys? Are you guys keeping all three of those in your house? Yep. Yeah. We definitely have all three of those. Um, and something that you've mentioned a couple times is layering. Um, yes. And, uh, if you have the multiple options at your disposal, then you can layer these and just feel even more protected. Um, you know, and it's, For me, the brush-on powder sunscreen is like the newest and, you know, 
I don't know, it's such a great invention and it's so new and cool. I just encourage everybody to try that because, um, again, thinking about your friend going down to the humidity um, for her <laughs> yeah. trip, thinking about people from Florida. I mean, like this brush, like if you get one of these um, powder brushes, it just absorbs also. And you're not going to have that liquid sunscreen dripping into your eyes because it's a powder. And sometimes that's just a nice, um, nice application. Yes. Option. Yes. Yeah. And that's a great point too with like regards to um, sunscreen dripping in your eyes. It can burn sometimes. Yeah. And if you're really active or your kids are playing sports, the mineral sunscreen, um, it won't do that. Right. I also, I love, my kids love the mineral brush on sunscreen. Mm-hmm. It's so mm-hmm. fun for them to put on. So I yeah. have one that's theirs and and every morning they put it on themselves. I'm like, did you brush your teeth? Oh. Did you go to the bathroom? Did you put your sunscreen on? I love that. And that's the it. sunscreen they're doing because I'm wanting that's to great. teach those habits, teach those self-care habits now when they're little. Yes. Um, yeah. I think we've talked a lot about that, just you and me off air, but the, yeah. yeah, the importance of making that a regimen for children and teaching the importance of it and protecting their skin. And, um, and you know, I noticed I've talked to my eldest about it recently and um, she's she's asking me, mommy, do I have freckles? Am I doing a good job of taking care oh. of my skin? And we've been talking a lot about how special her skin is and things like that. And um, it was a great teaching moment because if I hadn't met you and talked to you about it, I probably wouldn't pay much mind to it. I don't know. Um, but now I'm paying more attention to that and just, in, in, you know, encouraging being healthy. And one mm-hmm. one healthy thing we can do for ourselves is just protect it, protect it you know? Um, so, yes. yeah. I oh, I love that. that. Yeah, yeah, it is so... It is so important um, to teach our children how to take care of themselves. And so much confidence comes from that. And with regards to all health things, with regards to exercising, eating well, drinking water, wearing sunscreen. Um, I had an uncle I was really close to who passed away from skin cancer. And oh, I did not know that. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sharing this on the podcast instead of in person. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> These things come out. Yeah. I know. Wow. I don't. Yeah. But um, you know, it, you think about that and when you have these little babies with these this perfectly flawless skin, uh, yep. it's like we have to teach them how to protect their skin themselves because we want to empower them to have control over that. Yeah, absolutely. It is in their control. Um, it is important for kids to know what they do have control over. This is one of them. Yes. Um, you know, and also just thinking about that, those chemicals dripping in eyes, you know, thinking about the avobenzone and all that. My hairdresser, when I got the extension said, don't ever use that stuff again. Um, yes. the, the avobenzone and the octinoxate and all that stuff, because she said it changes your hair color, the, the extension pink. Yes. Oh my gosh. Shocking. I've been in my salon when I had my extensions installed and they said, make sure you don't get sunscreen in your extensions, <laughs> which what is that telling us? If it's like, don't put these chemicals, don't let it touch your fake hair, but right. it's okay to spray on your your skin? children and then and your and children then let it drip in their eyes I and know. breathe it in right yeah oh. um so much we know now <laughs> we yeah. didn't know that <laughs> always progress right yes. making progress here um, yes yeah yeah so I think when using mineral sunscreen in order for it to be um <clears throat> In order for the transition from a chemical sunscreen to a mineral sunscreen to go smoothly and for it to really protect your family, you know, kind of like what we talked about with Sarah from Curie on that episode of giving your armpits the two-week breathing period Mm -hmm. to get those chemicals out. So what we're going to want to do differently with mineral sunscreen is we're going to want to cover all areas extensively. Mm -hmm. And reapply often, especially if you're getting wet or sweating. And I suppose this could be more of a nuisance and it's not as easy as just spraying that aerosol can all over your body and being good for six hours. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way, but the reward is far outweighs this inconvenience. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and again, if you find one with nice, um, smooth application, it's not that much of a big deal to just reapply often um, and make sure you're you're totally covered. Um, 
Well, should we talk about some of our favorite sunscreens and make sure yes. everybody has some good recommendations? These are ones that we've we've tried a lot, like Sarah mentioned, and these are the ones that we have found um, work the best for our families. Yes. Um, and we're always I, trying new ones. Can yeah. I tell a funny story about trying new sunscreen? Yes. So, <clears throat> when my girls were a little bit younger, so I think it was during COVID and um, I had maybe a maybe a one-year-old and a four-year-old and we have a swimming pool and it was summertime and um i was thinking about okay how am i going to protect them and and i need to get sunscreen on them all day every day because we're spending every afternoon in the pool and, and i want them to be protected and so i went to whole foods by myself in my mask <laughs> and i went to the kids sunscreen aisle and I think I probably bought three or four different ones because mm -hmm. I wanted to give my older daughter the choice. Like I wanted it to be empowering for her. Like I bought these, which one do you want to try? Which one do you like? Mm -hmm. Well, every single one of them, it was like squeezing hard oh, like clay. Yes, yeah. like clay out Ugh. of the component. Yep. It was so frustrating. Every single one of them were terrible. But so this was a few years ago and um, it was this horrible experience and I, I couldn't believe it. And I just thought there has to be something better. Yeah. There has to be something better. And um, that kind of set me on this path of finding something better. So there is something better. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of better things. Yes. So let's jump into those. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously the first that we are always talking about is the Color Science Brush on Mineral Sunscreen. This goes on like a powder. It's just flawless. It just goes yes. on. The application is so easy. Um, and it, it's an easy one to throw into your bag and just touch up as you go too. If you notice that you've sweated or you just need to add some extra pretty quick, um, you know, you can dab this on somebody's face and run into a grocery store or wherever you're going, but you can definitely get that on to somebody pretty fast, which is nice with kids. It's nice. And it comes in three different shades, which I love. So it's not there are some powder sunscreen brushes that are all just this like white powder that I have fair skin and it still looks like I put baby powder on my face. Mm -hmm. So I love that this color science brush on comes in three shades. So you can, it really can just like blend in. It's almost like a little bit of makeup, which is great. Yeah. I love that. Um, the next one I love for my kids is um, Badger sunscreen. So this is um, a mineral sunscreen, and it's a one on the EWG website, the Environmental Working Group website, which we use to evaluate all the products that we're using now. Yes. Um, and it's a one, and um, the application of it for me, it is a little thick for the kids, but I I love the texture, and um, it, it definitely um, rubs in pretty easy. Um, they have sticks, they have the actual lotion, um, and my kids don't mind it. Um, and that, that's a big one for us. Our okay. youngest has a lot of skin issues. She's got eczema and, um, she has asthma and she's got all, you know, a lot of different things going on for her. And one thing her immunologist told us was, well, you need to definitely change to a mineral sunscreen. And this is one of the ones that I, I changed to, um, was the badger and then also skin ceuticals which is, um, it was, it was actually kind of funny. So when I started buying SkinCeuticals for the first time, it was this sunscreen, um, only I hadn't tried anything else from them. Um, but I had been told by her doctor to buy it and it came in the, uh, like in, um, a Caucasian flesh tone, but the flesh tone was quite, um, dark for my daughter who is Oh, she's very, very so like fair. so fair. And so I'd put this all over her face <laughs> and she looked like an orange just walking around the house. Like it was really pretty funny, um, but it worked, you know, like she'd had no skin reactions to that. Whereas like I was using the other chemical stuff on her before that. And she was breaking out in hives from it. Oh, um, yes. And so that was like initially what made me actually start looking at mineral sunscreens to begin with was this doctor saying, look, she can't tolerate any of those chemicals. Her skin is reacting. So you have to change to mineral. And the one I recommend is SkinCeuticals. So um, now I like SkinCeuticals for me because it is more like a foundation. Like it's got mm -hmm. a nice texture and it's um, you know, it just goes on very easy underneath my, my makeup. And so I like that for me. And then I like, 
um, the badger sunscreen for the kids. And for then the, kids. Um, the last one is super goop and super goop are like twos and threes on, on the EWG. So not completely clean, but they're pretty good. And, um, the, a lot of those, the texture is just like silk. Um, uh, I love okay. the texture of, um, some of their clear products. They're just like, I mean, I don't know. They're are, luxurious. Are those kids sunscreens or adult as well? They're, they're either. Yeah. Oh, so they okay. have some, um, they have some completely mineral sunscreens for kids and then they have, um, some, uh, you know, adult sunscreens as well that I use also on the kids. Um, yes. so they have a bunch of different products, um, and they're, they are, the application of those are pretty easy also. I think that's a good point that adult sunscreens, if they are mineral sunscreens are fine for kids. Yeah. Um, Kid sunscreens are not always fine for adults because they're not potentially a high enough blockage, right? Um, oh, I did not know that. So it might be. A... I'm getting an education here. Okay. <laughs> That's so interesting. You just want to check. Um, yeah. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but I will tend to use my own sunscreens on my daughter sometimes as well. The yeah. sunscreen I'm loving right now is Lyra, which is from... Uh, the brand that Carrie on our esthetician episode, um, what she sells and what she recommends. And she sent me a couple different options and I love, they have a, just a standard sunscreen um, that my kids and my husband use. Um, and then she sent me, they have a newest sunscreen. It's a facial sunscreen or facial neck decollete. It's not a body sunscreen and it is water-free sunscreen. So it is made um, with, so you only need like two or three drops of this and it comes in a little dropper type of component and Mm. you just need a tiny amount um, on your face and neck. And I, she just sent it to me. I've used it twice, but so far I really like that uh, for myself. The South would like that too. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a good would. one for humidity. If it's not water-based and you don't have to use very much of it, that was always the worst is like you're sticky and sweaty and now you got to put this lotion on on top of you and it's like, ugh. oh, if it's, yes. that's, a, that's a good one. Okay. And I want to try I that. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. That's on the Lyra website. Okay. What I love for my girls, um, there's two. I mentioned New Day Skin, which is from Australia. It's a little trickier to buy. It's not on Amazon, um, but I was gifted it and I love it. You can go onto their website and have it shipped from Australia. It smells really good and it's in pretty components, like bright colors. So my girls love that. I also really love the Ever Eden brand for kids um, sunscreen. And that one, it's a pretty thin consistency. So it's really easy to apply, um, but I do worry that it needs to be reapplied more frequently than a thicker sunscreen. Mm. Um, but those are great options too. So I think we're going to link all of these products on our Instagram because I know we just went through quite a few. And I know being a busy mom, all I want to know is <laughs> where, what the recommendation is and where to buy it. So make it nice and easy. So, yes. um, We will link on our Instagram these sunscreens that we recommend and our overall opinion after doing the research and diving deep into this topic is that there is no reason for chemical sunscreen anymore. It's not healthy for us. It's not healthy for our kids and it's not healthy for the environment. And there are much better options out there. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I wanted to add um, to that, check the EWG and just look at the sunscreen you do have. Like I I have probably 20 tubes of sunscreen because we have a pool. Just go through those and look up and see what the ratings are on some of them. Some of them may surprise you. They may be um, usable in like in the twos or threes, which I, I consider to be okay. Um, other ones, you know, one, one that popped up when I was going through my stuff was baby Gannics. Cause I, I had bought it. It sounded like it was organic. I think I had bought it from some, you know, some of my kids when they were younger cause it said baby and, mm-hmm. um, it's a seven. It's, 
Yeah. No. Really? Yeah. So I know. I was just oh. I was shocked. I was like, okay, trash. Um, so just go yes. to the EWG website or better yet, the app. Mm-hmm. Um, get it on your phone. You can take that thing into Target or wherever you're shopping, scan anything and check and see what that score is. And if it's high, like just don't buy it. If it's mm-hmm. high, trash it. Um, you know, go for the lower numbers and you know, protect yourself from those those harmful chemicals if you can. Mm-hmm. And even if um, it, if you need a recommendation, that app is so great with yeah. recommendations. It, it will is. give you products on there that are EWG approved. And I found myself just th- thinking, great, they've done the research. This is approved. Bye. Yeah. You know, one product um, line that I continue to see pop up on that is Attitude, which I think um, mm. a few episodes ago, I, I said I had bought their shampoo and conditioner because it was EWG verified. Um, and I liked it. They have a oh. ton of sunscreens. Oh, let's um, try it. Yeah. So that's next on my list to try because I did like their shampoo and conditioner. So um, I think it's a new brand and they're coming out with all kinds of great, clean products for us to use. So okay. um yeah. That's great. I that. like that. Yeah. All right. Sure. Well, we're going to keep our Instagram and Facebook up to date with all of the products that we try and um, recommend. Yep. Yep. All right. So this was so much fun. It um, was. I think it's a good way to kick off summer. Yeah. So I think our takeaways for sunscreen are that sunscreen is an important part of our overall health. It's an important self-care step that children can benefit from parental support in creating lifelong habits. For personal health and environmental health, we choose only mineral sunscreen, and it is important to apply generously and reapply often, especially after swimming and sweating. Perfect. Yes. Thanks for those take-homes, Sarah. Um, And everyone, please rate, like, and subscribe and catch us on Instagram and Facebook at Platinum Perspective Podcast. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.